In this video, we're going to do this hyperspace effect in Photoshop. This is dead easy. You can do it all in Photoshop within a couple of minutes. So if you're working on some kind of composite in a ship or you've got a bunch of Bandai ships like I've got up here, you can drop this in the background and get a pretty cool result. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, if you're new to the channel, I'm Chris. I do weekly Photoshop tutorials here on the channel. So if you're into compositing, special effects, that kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's down here somewhere below the video, maybe over there. Click that, then there's a bell thingy. Anyway, you know how to do that bit. Once you've clicked subscribe, go to the channel page uh, and there's a special subscriber only video. That's got a link to a whole bunch of cool stuff you can get for free. Only for subscribers though. Make sure you click subscribe. Oh, and there's all these videos I've been posting, special effects, all sorts of stuff. So click the videos tab as well. Check those out. There's loads of content you're gonna love. Okay, let's do this. So here in Photoshop, what you're gonna wanna start off with is a really big document. So I'm gonna go 4,000, 4,000. You wanna fill it with black. Uh, and in fact, what I'm gonna do is do a new layer as well as a black background, just fill that with black just to get started with. Then you want to come to filter, render fibers. Now this requires a little bit of playing around. So you've basically got to drag back and forth variance here and strength until you get something. Well, these, these, these are going to be the stars, right? This is going to be the stars coming out of the starburst. So you want lines, but you, you, you want them not too long like this. So I, I want to space them apart. So you want to drag the variance up uh, and then play with the strength. It's kind of hard to see unless you zoom in. And on a big document like this, that's 100%. That's too much. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to try this again. Filter, render fibers. Make sure you've got this at 100% in the effect because this is what it's going to render. So maybe I'll try dialing down the strength here. Yeah, that's a bit better. Just got to play around with this. Okay, we'll go with that. It's still not great, but we can work with it. So big mess. Then immediately you want to run levels. So Controller Command L. And then I'm going to drag the midpoint all the way up. Just bring the top down a little bit. And then we can push the bottom up as well. So you end up with something like that. And click OK. Then I'm going to put a blur on top of this. Just to get some of these edgy details out. So not too much. We don't actually need too much. It doesn't matter that it's a bit of a mess because all of that's going to be sorted in a second. So we'll go with that. I'm going to run levels again. So now what I want to do is the blurs actually made the brighter spots kind of gray. So just pulling the top end down is going to pop those back up a bit. Then what I'm going to do is zoom out. Now at the top here, I'm going to get the gradient tool over here. And what you want to have set is a gradient like this. So you want black at one end and transparent at the other. If you've got black in your palette as the top color and you click on the drop down for the gradients up here, the second option by default, unless you've changed them in Photoshop, should be this one. So you should get the black to transparent effect. Second one. Now, with that selected, you want to hold shift down, click the top of your document, and then just come down a little. So I've only come down about a tenth of the screen. All I'm doing is just adding a little black gradient right at the top. You're probably thinking, what the hell is he doing? Where am I going with this? Here's where it gets cool, okay? So I've put that gradient on the top. Now what I'm going to do is go to filter, distort, polar coordinates. You click that, you go rectangular to polar. Do you see where this is going? Aren't you glad you sat through this? If you'd have clicked away on some other shitty video down the side, you'd have missed all this. This is the good shit. Click OK. We're getting somewhere, right? Now, you zoom in, 
you can kind of see where this is going. We've got we've got the the embryonic stages of a uh, hyperspace effect here. What's next? I've forgotten. I should check my instructions. Uh, filter blur. Oh yeah, radial blur. That's next. So under here, you're going to do a zoom. This one you've got to play around with a bit. I'm going to stick with 38. We'll do that. Boom. There you go. Hyperspace. So again, this effect has kind of brought everything down, made things a bit gray. So you could run levels again here. Uh, I could just push the mids around here. Definitely going to bring the highlights down. But yeah, this is the effect. So the thing with the mids is the mids will kind of control how many of these streaks you've got. So if I take it all the way down, you can see it's way too many. If I take it up, it sort of starts to take some away. And then you can bring the um, highlights down just to make the ones that are remaining stand out, if that makes sense. But this is the basics for the effect. So the whole idea with that gradient at the top is that part's the kind of black core. Because if you look at any of the uh, pics of hyperspace on Google, the I guess the far part of space that it's starting from is pitch black. So that's the whole idea with that gradient. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to plug the gradient, but you'll kind of get this white core. It looks a bit rubbish. So for my money, it's worth doing that step. And then another thing you can do is go to filter blur. Sorry, not that one. Pinch. You got to filter distort pinch. Click that. I've got that at minus 31. Click OK. And that just exacerbates this effect even more, just creates a little bit of distortion. So there you go. Now, what's happened here is this is kind of applied to the whole document and you've got this sort of circular bit where we did the polar, co polar coordinates bit. So outside of that, the effect doesn't really make sense. So what I would do is crop into this. So you want to hit the crop tool. And then if you hold shift down on your keyboard as well as alt or option, then you can just bring that in and just crop out those kind of edge bits that don't make sense. And now you've pretty much got this hyperspace effect that you can use in another document or start off from this document, whatever you want to do. Last thing's color. So a couple of ways to do this. You could drop something like selective color on top of this from the adjustment layers down here. I would go straight to the neutrals. I mean, I'd probably push a bit of blue in. Maybe we'll get a bit of green from the magenta just to counteract that. Uh, can do it that way. My preferred way of doing it is to do a gradient map container. I covered this in this tutorial, which you can see on the channel. I've got an action for that here. If I click play on that, and then drag our hyperspace effect into the gradient map container. Now I've got this gradient map that I can muck around with to control the effect here. So this is way too saturated. So I'm just going to bring that down a bit. We'll make it a little bit greener. And then obviously I can pull this back and forth to just control the spread of that effect. And this is the great thing about doing a gradient map container because you can get much, much more control over the sort of spread of your colors just with a gradient. So that's pretty much all there is to this effect. I want to show you one more way of doing this that will give you a lot more control over each of the individual steps in here. So what I'm going to do is turn that off at the top. I'm going to start a new layer just above these. Do the same thing. Shift F5. Fill it with black. Now, this time, what I'm going to do is right-click that layer and immediately convert it to a smart object. What's going to happen now is I'm going to apply exactly the same sequence of effects, but what will happen is they'll each stack up and each of them will be editable. So rather than that sequence you just saw me go through where each one's done one at a time and we can't go back and change anything, by doing it as a smart object, you can actually go back all the way to the fibers effect and tweak it with all those other effective effects applied with the exception of that little gradient. So let me walk you through this. So I'm going to rush through this just so we can get this up and running. And it doesn't really matter for this one because, because I can come back and change everything. So I've done my fibers. Now I'm doing levels. 
Same thing again. I'm going to push the mids up, bring the highlights down a bit. I'm not too worried about what this is going to look like because any of these I'm going to be able to change in a minute once I get the kind of finished effect. Blur, I'm just assuming, is picking up the same value I had from before. Uh, we can't do the gradient, but now we can go to polar coordinates, apply that, and then what do we do next? Radial blur. I always forget on that one. Apply that. I'm going to do a levels again. Bring those up. Oh. It's gone crazy. Mids up, highlights down. Or I should say mids down, highlights up. Something like that. Anyway, get that on there. And I could go and do our pinch as well, but I think I'll leave that off because what I want to show you with this is how you can edit these effects. So having applied all those, because it's a smart object, all of these are editable. So I can go all the way back to fibers and tweak around with that and see what it does. Now, we've got six effects stacked up here. So Photoshop is just sweating like a pig in the sun here. I'm scared it's going to burn a hole through the desk because it's got to run all these effects every time we change something. But this is the power you get from doing it with a smart object that you can just come in, change anything you like, and you can see what it does. That's pretty cool. I quite like that. So having done that, I might come in and go, well, let's drag variance up a little bit. And then maybe that Gaussian blur, I'll just nudge that up a little bit more just to get a bit of feathering. Yeah, that's probably too much around the edges. Doesn't look too great, but you get the idea. So this is another thing you can do. The other thing I like about this is you can kind of use this to dial in the numbers on the effect, and then you can jot those down or whatever and use those when you apply it like we did the first time round, where I did it manually and did the gradient, everything else. So that's pretty much it. Once you've done this, you can grab this and put it in a composite like this one I did on Facebook. So I've just taken a couple of shots here of these Hot Toys figures, just their backs. Got this shot of the Falcon. This is actually the cockpit of the Bandai Perfect Grade Falcon. So I took a quick pick of that as well. Did some green screen extraction on these shots. Watch this video to learn how I do that. And then just put all these things in Photoshop. Very, very quick edit, very quick color grade and ended up with this pick. I was way too fast with this pic, just slapped it up on Instagram here on my account. It looks terrible because I didn't spend much time on it. So don't do something quick and sloppy like me. Go and spend some time on it and get something you're proud of. So that's it for this tutorial. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you can hit that like button down there. If you've got any questions, if any of this doesn't make sense, leave me a comment below on the channel. And finally, as I said at the start of the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out all the other videos I've got here on special effects, composites, that kind of thing. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.